This is my new router mill I built. I believe this is the seventh generation machine after seven or eight years of uh, experimenting with these things. This one, um, I'm very pleased with it. Um, the frame itself is made out of laminated three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood. Um, all the joints are half lapped and, and gaps are filled in on the other side and the inner part is sanded smooth and, and filled with any filler to give it a smoother look. Uh, the back here in the tower area is all connected together very tight in here. There's actually three layers from this section up. This is to help prevent any twist uh, in the upper part here if the uh, router grabs too hard and, and wants to push over to the side. It's pretty much eliminated. Um, this is a very, very strong table. The uh, weight of the thing is about, it's over 200 pounds, it's pretty heavy. So I have I have the, uh, wheels in the back here, and in the front I've got like skid pads, They're, it's HDPE plastic um, underneath there. That way any moisture in the concrete or floor won't be absorbed up into the legs. But that plastic, I use that plastic on, on all my machine parts, um, my cranks and everything. It, it works very well, it's very durable. Uh, strong and it machines and cuts good. In the front down here, you can see a foot pedal. That foot pedal is for the pl uh, plunge feature on the uh, on the router mill. Uh, you can barely see a rod here, but there's a rod that goes to a cable, goes over a pulley, back over. You can barely see it comes up over here. Uh, that's that's kind of like an automotive choke cable, um, a little heavier than that, but. Um, pushing down on this will give me four inches of travel on this front carriage right here. I can actually plunge down four inches if needed. There's a stop collar here too that uh, I can set for my depth. Of, if I only want to go a little bit or up to four inches, I can I can adjust that. But this this whole uh, unit or the uh, turret or whatever you want to call it raises up to this top up here, and that'll give me. 12 inches of clearance from the table to this router bit when it's all the way up. The three cranks in the front, this one actually raises the uh, turret in the back. This one is table movement uh, front to back, and this one is right to left. The table movement right to left on this table, there's the table itself is 48 inches and it moves 32 inches back and forth. Uh, front to back, it moves 18 inches. So that, that's a pretty big surface to be able to uh, surface plane or um, do larger projects with. When I created this one, I wanted a smooth table that was uh, that had no play or no wiggle in the, uh, in the table itself. Um, so I came up with an idea of I used angle iron on each side as rails on all the movement. Um, and what I did is I created a wheel, and I'll show you that in a second here. This wheel I created runs, uh, has a groove in it and runs right in the angle iron. I actually used the angle iron itself as a cutting tool so the slot is exact. It actually fits on there a little snug, um, and it's also machined for bearing on each side. Now here's one that does have the bearings in it. And this is a this is ultra smooth table because I create pressure on both sides of the of the table with adjusting screws so that I can tighten this up and um, there's it's just very tight and very smooth. And I have it on this forward and back sideways on the carriage and on the the uh, turret arm back here. There's a total of 18 of these wheels. They were time consuming to build, but they work very good. Uh, the, this table here, because it goes so far to the right and left, it cantilevers so far out. I actually have six, three on each side here. There's one behind this block here. I just wanted some extra strength for when that table is hanging out either side. One of the other features I created on the table is um, I have stop blocks on the table so that uh, um, when you're routing and you want to come to a certain spot and stop, you know, when I first built my original ones, I just used lines and, and sometimes it was, sometimes you made it to that line, sometimes you went a little farther. So 
I have stop blocks. Here's the block here, and it runs in a half inch shaft. I'll get a little closer here so you can see it better. And I think you can see it better now, but it's a half inch rod, and it goes through a block right here. And I've got uh, collars, um, collar stops on each side. They just have a thumb screw on them, so you can you can slide them to any position that you want to, uh, you know, to, to stop the table for where you want to stop it. I also have it. It's down here underneath. It might be harder to see, but so I also have it on the uh, forward and backward movement. And again, I got to stop up here on this uh, on this for the plunge feature. Here's a little better look at the underside of it. Um, another thing I use, I use um, number 35 chain to drive the tables with. Uh, there's a 12 tooth sprocket in here with the appropriate idler pulleys to keep tension on it. Um, the nice thing about it is it's absolutely positive. There's no backlash or gear lash or, or reverse forward lash from threaded rod. It's very tight, very, very nice. And also it's, it's faster too. Threaded rod is too slow for a, a milling machine like this on wood. Um, one turn of my crank moved this table three and five eighths inches. So I also have right here, there's a, there's a little clamp that clamps this, this bottom uh, carriage here, clamps this upper part to that with just a screw. And I have the same thing on the back. In case I have to take this whole table unit off, it's just loosening this screw up and this screw up in the back and this whole section lifts off. That's so, because it's so wide if I have to get it through an area or through a door or moving it or something. Well, we're down here. Another thing I was going to mention, I've got a big hole underneath here. This uh, round disc here, there's two round discs, and they're kind of uh, convex on the, on the inside. I, I, I routed them so they were convex. So the only thing that's touching on the two discs is the outer one-inch perimeter. So when I clamp these two together, there's one big bolt that goes through here, and I put a wrench up in this hole to tighten it up. Um, and with that out. With the outside surfaces just touching, it, it clamps down in almost any position. I don't need any locks or anything like that. This uh, this little bolt right here, I have a, a hole drilled all the way through, and this takes me back to 90 degrees after I've moved the table. You can actually see the stop blocks under here now, and you can see the, the rail and the wheels. And these are my tensioning screws that, is as I as I before I tighten these up, I push some tension on these on the sides of these screws. These are in slots just on one side of this, and I tighten these two up, and it puts pressure on the table. I have the same thing on this, and actually on all of the uh, all the wheels. On the top of the table, uh, right in the center here, I have a. Uh, piece of the plastic in here and I have several holes in it. Um, I've got eighth quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths, half inch, five eighths, and three quarters. And the reason I have those is I use these a lot for either center points or if I want to do pin routing. For instance, um, I have a half inch bit in there right now. And what I do is if I want to do pin routing, I'll line the bit up with the half inch hole just to get it centered right. And then what I'll do is I'll lock my table with the table locks. That way the table doesn't move or the table uh, stops. Then I just put a half inch pin in here like that. And um, that becomes my uh, pin router. Another thing I use this uh, for is um, I do a lot of circle cutting um, or even arches or half corners, quarter corners or whatever. But I'll use this as pivot points for my... Uh, circles so I can just put a pivot in there and depending on the size of my circle you know I figure out where my center is and I can easily cut circles pretty quickly and very accurately as far as clamping things on the table I have many threaded inserts I've got a, a series of four of them here and that same series of four over there um, and I've got different plywood pieces I clamp on there and um, depends on what I'm doing or holding on there. I've got different uh, 
apparatuses to uh, hold them to the table. Now this is the back side of the machine. You can see down here I'm using bevel gears. I got a 5-8 shaft coming through and a bevel gear on a piece of half inch threaded rod that drives the uh, turret or the arm up above. And this is part of my cable system for my uh, plunge feature. Let's see if I can tilt this up. You can see, you can see how that's, that's threaded through there. And it goes through the back of the, uh, there's a slot back there that it runs through. And then there's just a guide for the uh, threaded rod up above here. Well, that's about it. I'm going to be making some videos in the next few days of some simple things you can do with this and then um, some more complicated things to do with it. Uh, the longer you have something like this, the more creative you can get and as you think of ways to use it. I've had a lot of fun with it and uh, hope you enjoyed the video.